Welcome to the future of spelling. My name is to link a lot, as I like to link a lot. Linking is a fun and easy way to remember things by trying to find a connection. And it is really good for spelling. Any word you want. Tiny words, big words, medium sized words, small words, really big words, massive words, gigantic words, huge words. Anything at all, any word you want. There are various linking techniques and I'll talk you through each one in a lesson. Lesson one was words inside words. Lesson two was other things inside words. Lesson three was things that look like letters. And lesson four was silent letters. Sorry, silent letters. Today, lesson five is a technique I adore called letter linking. It's a new term. I made up this term, but I'm very, very happy with it. It's called letter linking, this lesson, and Susie stories. We'll come back to that later. Now, before we go any further, we've had some great, uh, great uh, chats online with people on social media, Facebook, Twitter, with their ideas, their links, and there have been a few badges won. So exciting, the whole thing. So, so exciting. I say, I keep saying it, it's not all about me. I'm there for you. I'm there, I'm your safety net, you can't think of a link, but you start thinking of links. It's not all about me. I do keep saying that, but it's an important point to make. So, the first one we got that I really liked was from a girl called Isabella. She thought of this link, six years old, six years old, for the spelling of Saturday. She said, you are sat around all day doing nothing. You are, you are of Saturday, S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. You are sat around all day on Saturday doing nothing. Nothing. Now that from a six-year-old, I think it's really, really clever. I appreciate grammatically it should be you uh, you are seated or sitting. So you are sitting. But for a six-year-old, we'll let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Stop it. Stop it. Really, really good link for a six-year-old girl to think of that. We give Isabella a clap, a two-finger ripple, and she's winning a badge. She's won a badge for that, a... A new toy, a new prop, we love it. Anyway, now that'll do, stop, stop, stop it. Don't go on for too long, okay? The next one, another really good one, was from a boy called Benji. Now he thought of a link for the spelling of address because address is a double -D, -D, -R -E -S, S. There's two Ds in address, which can be quite tricky. My one is don't forget to add your address, so don't forget to add your postcode to your address, add inside address. But here's one was, really clever I think. Mum, another mad dress has turned up at our address, probably for you, all right? Another mad dress has turned up at our home address. Mad dress, drop off, drop off the M, address. Very clever. Clappity clap, two finger rip, and you guessed it, for the badge. <laughs> nice. Great stuff, great stuff. So, lesson five is about letter linking and Susie's stories. We'll come back to Susie's stories later. Letter linking. This is a very, very strong technique. The formula is tough word next to easy word in an expression you know or could learn very easily. Tough word next to easy word in an expression you know or could learn very easily. So the first word up is... Crumb. You can't hear the B of crumb. 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 It was like the silent letters, the silent letters lesson with a uh, thumb. You can't hear the B of thumb. Thumb. Crumb. So for you, you've got five seconds to think of as many links as you can. The formula is tough word is crumb next to another word that begins with B that's something to do with crumb. So give me a word beginning with B that's something to do with crumb. A word beginning with B, beginning with B, but something to do with crumb. See how many you can get in the next five seconds. It could be three or four or five here. A word beginning with B that's something to do with crumb. Start the clock.
Did you get two? Two? One's great. Did you get two? Over. To the link. Crumb. There is a silent B at the end of the word. In the expression breadcrumb, swap the B of the word bread with the B of the word crumb. The B of bread, the B of crumb. Breadcrumb. Biscuit crumb. Crumbs are bits. You bite. So there's all sorts of bun. There's loads of links for that. And if you thought of one or two, great. Uh, you just pick the one that works for you. There are so many for that. But I think bread crumb is quite straightforward. Biscuit crumb. The B of bread, the B of crumb. Next time you hear crumb, you've got to think bread crumb. A very short journey to make. Now, that's quite a small word. Let's go to a biggie. A big one. A biggie. <gasps> the word is... Accommodation. Ooh, that's a toughie. A tough one. Now, this one, I've looked at the C's and the M's are a problem, but also the O's can be tricky as well, especially the second O. Very difficult. I'm assuming you can spell words ending T-I-O-N for now, if not, I've got links for that separately. So, the C's and the M's. And you've got to think of a word beginning with C, word beginning with M, and then also the O's. We're combining two techniques, letter linking, the first letter of other words to do with accommodation, and also what a letter looks like as well. I'm very excited about this one. This is a very popular one. It's a very, very important word to spell, accommodate as well. That's sort of this good word. Uh, so let's go over to the link. Accommodation is where you sleep. There are two C's and two M's, each followed by an O. So the two cats meow chase the two mice squeak squeak into their accommodation. Squeak, squeak. How good are my impressions? Not good. Not worthy of that bell. Anyway, accommodation. I hope that worked for you. If it did, marvellous. If it didn't, I'll get you next time. Think you're right? Let's stick with some long words. Another long word coming up. The word is... Recommend. A good word. Good word to use, really good word to use. I recommend the government does this. I recommend this uh, to my parents that do this, you know, whatever. It's a good word, recommend a tremendous word. The C's and the M's are a problem. Also the O in between the C and the M's are tricky. C-O-double-M, C-O-double-M. Letter linking. Think of a word beginning C-O-double-M that's something to do with recommend and put it all together. So C-O-double-M, not so easy this one, but it's a really good one to get into it. There are many here. You think, I recommend something and something and something, a word beginning C O double M. Okay, I'm going to put it on the clock. A word beginning C O double M. When you've got a word, put it into a sentence with the word recommend. Okay, so let's start that clock. Did you get one? If you did, yes. If you didn't, over to the link. Recommend. The C-O-M-M -M of the word recommend matches the C-O-M-M -M of the word comma. Mrs. Fox is not a happy English teacher. The punctuation in your homework was appalling. I recommend from now on using more commas and full stops. Animal impressions, impressions of female teachers. I mean, the list is endless, really. I mean, you know. Anyway, so C O double M of comma, C O double M of recommend. Just slot it, start matching it up, letter linking. A really good technique. I mean, there could be, I recommend you obey my command, said the sergeant major, C O double M of command. I recommend you read my comments, says the teacher, C O double M of comments. There could be many, many. Whatever works for you. It's a good, uh, a good one. I like that one. The next word up is move. Tricky word could be M W O V or M W O V E. M O V E. Let's put you on the clock. Can you think of a word beginning O V E? Firstly, a very small word beginning O V E, and put it together in an expression with the word move. A word beginning O-V-E, a very small word. Let's start that clock. Did you get it? 
Move. The O-V-E of the word over finishes off this word. Oi! Move over! Ah! Oi! Move over! There you go. Move over. Use that expression to learn the spelling of move. Next up, two words. The words are... Length and strength. The G in the middle very often gets dropped in both words, very often. So the challenge to you is, give me a word beginning E-N-G, which is in both words, E-N-G, E-N-G. Think of that word. Then put it into an expression or a sentence to do with, we'll go with length. It's a bit easier than the strength one. Length and the word you thought of. Let's start that clock. Now over to the link. Length and strength. E-N-G, that are the first three letters of England, is inside each word. To run the length of England, you need serious strength in your legs. England, the E-N-G of England inside length and strength. Beer bread, the beer of crumb. Letter linking, a very powerful technique. Really, really good technique. And there are hundreds out there. Now, I would like to introduce to you my partner in crime, Lady Alexa Cockifer, or she likes to be called Lady Lex, who will be telling you the story behind some of the words we've covered so far in our lessons. Greetings, Lady Lex. How are you this fine day? I am extremely well. Thank you, Sir Link a lot. Although it's very rainy here, it's not a fine day, my end. Um, but that doesn't matter because we're going to talk about words, and words are always bright and shiny. They are. Well, bright and shiny, we like bright and shiny. Now, the first question I have to ask you is what is a lexicographer? It's a really difficult word, not only to spell, but to pronounce this one. I think it's easier to think of lexicographers who compile dictionaries, really, as words detectives. Um, because what we do is we dig around for evidence of how a word is used, um, whether or not it's really popular or whether it's fading away. And of course, we look at the spellings as well, because sometimes spellings can change over time. So we're word detectors. We're always looking for new evidence with our magnifying glasses. Now, I'm guessing, but you tell me, why have you joined me in my quest of making I can't spell a thing of the past? What's your, what's your reasoning behind joining me? The reason I wanted to join Sir Link a lot is what you were doing is making spelling fun and I've always loved dictionaries but I know that I'm quite unusual in that not everybody loves dictionaries although they should or maybe we'll talk about that one day um, because they're so full of these amazing stories but you are taking the words that really can't be learned in any other way than memorizing them. And that's not really very appealing to quite a lot of uh, people. You know, you can't spell them through their sound because their sound and their spelling are actually really different. And what you've done is put together so many fantastic little animations that are just funny to watch and help those really tricky spellings lodge in the mind. And it also gives me a chance to, sell, to tell some of those secret stories that I mentioned that are behind the word. So I'm kind of coming up behind you um, with some of those wonderful word origins. We do love a dictionary. And here's one, this one here. It's the Oxford English. I know some people like Chambers, but whatever, I'm an Oxford man. Deal with it. Okay, we love a dictionary. Fascinating stuff. And you get more and more words every year. Now, Susie, you mentioned Susie's, um, you mentioned secret stories. We're gonna call them Susie stories on the app. And at the moment there are 40 up there with many more to come, which is fantastic. And let's, uh, we're going to show you a few now to see what it's all about. Over to Susie's Stories. Biscuit is a French compound word pronounced biscuit. Bis means twice. It's a sibling of the bi in bicycle, which has two wheels. Cui is the past tense of a French verb meaning to cook. So biscuit literally means twice cooked, B 
because there were two parts to the process. Firstly, the biscuits were baked and then they were dried in a slow oven. Knife is a Germanic word that came into English as Kneef. The hard C, which went on to become a K, was pronounced at the beginning of the word, just as the Germanic invaders of Britain would have pronounced it. In fact, lots of words have a silent K at the beginning, which would originally have been spoken. A knight was a knight from the German Knecht, a young man or boy, and knitting was once knitten. We dropped the K sound to make things easier for the English-speaking tongue. Shame. I'd love to talk about knowing how to knit with a knight on my knee. Manoeuvre, meaning a carefully planned scheme or action, was once all about using our hands. At its heart is the word manus, the Latin for hand, and the French word oeuvre, meaning work. That manus also gave us manual, operated by hand, manacles, handcuffs, manipulate, to handle, manicure, a treatment for your hands and nails, and manuscript, something written by hand. It also gave us manure, dung, which farmers often clear away with a hand-held spade. Poo! We love those stories. We love a story behind a word. You can now spell the word and you now got the origin of the word. Suddenly, it's becoming easier, but more importantly, interesting, fascinating. Now, Susie, well, sorry, Lady Lex, how dare I call you Susie? Uh, Lady Lex, photographer, I'm sorry, it's very poor of me. Uh, in those animations, they mentioned, uh, you mentioned Latin, uh, French, and Germanic. So clearly, the English language has been influenced by many other languages. Uh, by many, a few, or quite a few? Many. I always look on English as being like a huge hoover that over the centuries has sucked up words from almost every language that you can think of. So um, Latin and Greek are the kind of bedrocks, if you like. They're the sort of foundations very much of many words in English. But we are essentially a Germanic uh, language, so there's a big foundation there as well. And then over the centuries, you know, we've been explorers, we've been adventurers, we've been plunderers, and we have taken words from every single land and continent that we have encountered. So it's a mishmash, it's a vast melting pot, whether it's words from the Normans, from the Norman conquerors after 1066, or the Vikings earlier still, uh, we have taken those words and made them our own. And it is absolutely fascinating to dig into them as, as a word detective. Yeah, it's great. We're very excited about everything. It's, fa it's fantastic to get have you on board. It's so exciting. Uh, Susie, whatever, I called you Susie there. There you go. Um, thanks for coming on today. And we look forward to you coming on to the next time. Thanks, everyone. Let's put this back in its rightful place. So that was Lady Lexicographer. A lexicographer writes dictionaries, amongst other things. That ends today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you'd like to uh, get free access to the app during lockdown, go to the website. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, or you want something linked, or you've got your own links to earn yourself a badge, like this one here for accommodation there, or Sir link a lot there, then uh, go to the Facebook, uh, Facebook page or go to Twitter. The last thing I'll say to you is, as always, the name of the app is Sir link a lot Is it in? You know it is.